I'll start with a quick review for this book, 10 Drugs. I got this book three out of five. It has better and worse parts. So I'm kind of a mix. Some parts are good, some parts not as good. In some part of the book is way too technical and was not engaging for me. And other parts are actually, I was more tuned in and was interesting in the information provided. So I think it could definitely be better. Or other than that, I felt like the book was a little misorganized. Obviously, you had the episodes, but above that, it was kind of like, it feels like he's all over the place a little bit and not super organized in what's going on. Some of the stories was extremely, were extremely uninterested, uninteresting for me. So I think that's what is kind of a mixed bag. That's why I came out with the three. Let's see the notes I was taking. This one is Americans are 5% of the world, but consume 50% of the drugs. This is an interesting fact because in 50% of the drugs while only being 5% of the world, which is a lot of drugs. Drugs work as they become a part of us. So they, they disintegrate and become all the molecules and they are becoming part of us, which is also true about food, but this is how they essentially work. The cycle of drugs, where we all excited about it, we become worried about it, about the side effects, we develop balanced approach. So there's like a three stage, we all get excited, there's like a same cycle happens with many drugs. Getting excited, we develop, and then there is side effects, and then we find, okay, there is like a balance we have to find in between, so not too much of it, not too little of it. Morphine is the molecule of opium, which creates sleepiness, calmness, and soothing pain. So they essentially are very similar, morphine and opium. And what they do is cause sleepiness and calmness and also help with pain. Heroin is a semi-synthetic drug. So they develop uh, they changed and tweaked some of the molecules and they created in some way even more powerful opium. Opiates by nature are hardly addictive. Our brain is naturally addicted to opium. Sulfur is the main ingredient in antibiotics. It used to come in a form of a powder. So the usually the antibiotics are having a lot of sulfur inside. We've seen some movies they have those these powders that they use, especially the older movies. And that is a sulfur powder. Fentanyl is very potent, which cause overdoses. It's even very extremely potent. It's also uh, uh, synthetically made and it's really easy to overdose since due to his, its potency. Narcan attaches itself to opiate receptor, which prevents opiates from working. So we, they control over the receptors and opiates cannot attach themselves. So it's extremely helpful and not going to save many lives. Americans are more likely to ask for pills when they experience mental or physical discomfort. So they made some, they made some studies, I think probably. And what they figure out is that Americans are more likely if there is even the minor discomfort, they're more likely to ask or to get some pills for it. Side note, the book is often overly technical, very technical book and at times, which I found as unnecessary. It's really unnecessary. You don't have to add all that technical details unless you're talking to people from the field. But if you're talking to the general public, it was kind of like 
boring for me because I, I'm not interested in it. High cholesterol is not necessarily related to heart disease. They found there is no, there is no direct relation between cholesterol to heart disease. Low fat diet often causes people to eat more carbs, which might cause diabetes. That's the problem with the low carb diets is that they, people don't have enough carbs or they don't, they don't feel satiated. What they do, they supplement with sugars or carbs, which are, which cause in turn diabetes, especially in higher doses. People who take a drug with side effects are often more likely to feel a pain or side effects, even when such does not exist. So if they know, it's kind of like similar to the placebo effect. So upon knowing that there's side effects, people are more likely to feel, with quotes, air quotes, to feel that there is side effects. Personalized medicine is the future, even though it would be very hard to implement based on genes due to the complexity of it. So the future basically is personalized medicine, which is like tailored to specific person, especially made for a specific person for that, for their genes. The problem is that it's extremely complicated and they don't know how to do it yet, especially when there are so many genes and the interaction between the genes and between the medicine is very hard. So the author is skeptical about such future, or obviously it could be far in the future, but in the close future is skeptical. So that's it for the notes again. There's some interesting parts, but not, uh, not best. That's why I gave three out of five. Thank you.